Hi, Caleb from Brownhouse here, and in today's video, we're going to be covering the Midwest Industries Combat HD handguards for the AR-15. Uh, so if you're familiar with the Midwest Industries handguard, like their, their standard combat rail, uh, then you'll be familiar with this one right here. But now they have the HD series. So we're going to go over what the differences between the standard and the HD series are. And then we're going to go over full installation. And honestly, they install exactly the same. Uh, but since we have them here, we may as well just jump right into that as well. So for the first part of this video, let's just go ahead and do a quick overview. So they come in three different lengths. You have a nine and a quarter, then a 10 and a half, and then a 13 and a half. And no, they don't currently make them any longer than that. Uh, the reason being, if you're familiar with like their Night Fighter series of handguards, uh, these kind of fuse the two. And 13 and a half is really as long as you can reasonably go and maintain little to no deflection at the end of the handguard. Uh, so that means if you're mounting like laser aiming devices and stuff like that on your handguard, um, you, you don't really have to worry about that because of the way these are made. Uh, whenever you start getting out with handguards that are like close to that 16 inch mark, then you start and you start hanging lasers and stuff on them, you can, you can get some deflection there. Uh, and that's not what we want. So that's why they make them in 13 and a half. And honestly, 13 and a half is perfect. If you want to do like a 13, nine or 14 and a half inch barrel, uh, these look really good on those. Uh, but with that being said, let's kind of look at some of the structural differences because that's where things really get interesting. Uh, so I have the standard one here and just compare them. And the first thing you'll notice if you pick up both of them that are similar lengths, this HD handguard is noticeably heavier. Uh, so if you want to do a super lightweight build gun, uh, Midwest Industries does make lightweight handguards or they do make lightweight handguards. English is hard. Uh, that are for specifically for those lightweight builds. But if you're looking for something that's, you know, heavy use, you're going to be beating the heck out of it and you want it to last forever, then the HD is the way to go. So if you look at the top here, and I keep setting this down, we're comparing them, so I need to, I need to hang on to this. All right. If you look at the top rail here, you'll notice there's a scallop that goes across that. That's not just to, you know, remove a little material and decrease a little bit of weight where possible. Uh, but that radius there adds structural strength to that actual top rail. And they did the same thing on the inside, too, if you look straight down there. Uh, compared to just that square angle cut, that radius makes this top rail way stronger. So if you're in a situation where your rail could be getting uh, crushed or something like that, uh, this will take a lot more abuse than most standard handguards. Now, obviously, you can see they did add a good bit of thickness to this thing. So the one on the right is the standard, and then, or excuse me, my right, your left. <laughs> the one on your left is the standard, and then the right is the HD. Pretty noticeable differences there. Uh, and then they also changed up the way the M-lock M -lock slots are as well. They added, again, another radius here along the, the main body of the handguard. And then you still have your 45 degree or your offset M-lock slots at the front where you would need them. And then another thing, uh, we can look at those QD sockets. So the HD is reinforced with steel, and then your standard is just the aluminum. All right, and then moving on from there, you'll notice the area where the barrel nut sits in is noticeably longer on the HD. And let me go ahead and pull those barrel nuts out because they are different. And your HD uses a T27 Torx here. I'm just going to pull this out real quick. They still use that standard two screw lockup with that indexing piece because that has worked extremely well, so there's no need to change that. There's your HD handguard or HD handguard barrel nut. Kind of if you're familiar with the Midwest Industries Night Fighter series they did, uh, then you'll recognize that because they use a similar one on that one as well. And let me just pull off their standard barrel nut here. And that's the standard. So very noticeable differences there. 
they added some length to it so that you get uh, more surface contact further out on the handguard. So again, uh, that helps mitigate that deflection you may get. And they also put some holes in it. Uh, not necessarily just to reduce weight where they can. Obviously, it does do that. Uh, but the, whenever you're shooting, your barrel gets hot. That means your handguard gets hot. Uh, but before that, your barrel nut actually gets pretty hot too. And that'll help radiate some of that heat. All right. And... Those are the main differences there. Uh, you still have your anti-rotation tabs on there. Uh, you still have those vents along the top spine there. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much the main differences there. All right, so while we have it out and I have an upper receiver here, I may as well show you how to install it. So let's go ahead and jump right into the installation. So if you've installed a Midwest Industries handguard before, uh, then you've done this before because they install pretty much the same way. But let's jump right into it. All right, so I have my upper receiver here uh, in the in a the device. I'm, I'm getting mixed up here. <laughs> this is the device from device manufacturing, uh, but you can use your favorite upper receiver vice block. That's no big deal there. We're using a Roscoe Green Line barrel, so I will just put a little bit of grease on there. Any Molly B base grease will work fine. All right, we'll just kind of spread that around, push it into that upper receiver. Grab a rag here. And I'm not done with that. I'm going to leave that out. And now we can install the barrel nut. So I'm just going to take a little bit more of that grease and put it on the threads. All right, now that that's on their hand tight, we just need to torque it down. So I'm using a, a wheeler wrench here. And the only thing you need to remember for Midwest Industries handguards is 40, the number 40. So we're gonna torque our barrel nut at 40 foot pounds and then our screws, our locking screws at 40 inch pounds. So that makes everything nice and easy. And I can count to 40. There we go. Oh, I think that's the right size there. I'm using this Wheeler one here, the one that's made for castle nuts. Uh, but Midwest Industries, they do include the wrench, or the, uh, the driver attachment, I should call it. And if you don't have this particular setup, uh, it still comes with a driver attachment, so you can you can use that on your favorite torque wrench. It'll work just fine. All right, set the tool at 90 degrees. There we go. All right. That's all you got to do there. And then now we can put on our gas tube, gas block. I'm using a Brownells gas tube with a forward controls design gas block, but on this particular part of the process, you can use uh, whatever your favorite is. And I'm just going to tighten this down real quick here. This barrel is dimpled, so I'm going to tighten down the rear one first, make sure I get it into that dimple. That looks good. Snug these screws up. Nice and easy. All right. Okay, so now we can take the handguard. Which one was I going to use? I was going to use this one. I pulled the barrel nut out of the shorter one, so I'll just have to swap those out real quick here. But that's no big deal. All the all all three of the handguard lengths use the same exact barrel nut. Okay, 
So, I'm going to wipe some of that. They have that oil on there from shipping, so you don't get any kind of corrosion or anything like that in storage and shipping. I'll just wipe that off real quick. Okay. And we'll slide it on. There we go. And now we can put our lock piece in. And I'll take it off of here to show you that. Just like on their previous handguards, this piece is actually the same exact piece as the, the other ones. Making sure the long edge is towards the rear and the short is towards the front. We'll just drop it in there, line it up with the screw holes. Take our screws, put them in. And then we're going to take our T27 driver and tighten them down. All right. We'll put that back on our vice block here just to make things a little easier. I'm going to give those another turn real quick here. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and switch to our torque driver. Uh, this is the Brownells torque wrench set at 40 inch pounds. Inch pounds. And I'm just going to turn them. There you go. Okay. Now we can install our muzzle device, uh, whichever muzzle device is your favorite muzzle device. And that's all there is to it. So, uh, this is what the 13 and a half looks like with a, I believe this is a 13.9 barrel. So this is that Roscoe Green Line 13.9. Might be a 13.7. Um, but anyway, with that being said, uh, that's the longest handguard variant. Like I said, this also looks really good if you're using a 14 and a half inch barrel. Um, and that's all there is to it. If you have any questions, comments, uh, any experience with this handguard, let us know in the comments down below. Because as y'all know, I'm uh, pretty much always been a Midwest Industries you know, fan. I don't want to say the word fanboy just because I hate that term, but I am definitely a fan of Midwest Industries stuff. And I think this is definitely my new, out of not just Midwest Industries handguards, but like all of the handguards on the market currently right now, uh, this is probably easy, easily within my top three. Um, and maybe we'll get into what that top three actually is in another video. But uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, let us know. Uh, if you need help with anything for any reason ever, give us a call on the tech line. We'll be happy to help you out. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.